What's up guys, I'm Eric, and this is the first video in the Intro to ZBrush series. The series is intended for total beginners or people coming from other 3D packages. And we're gonna take a look at ZBrush from your first time opening it, all the way through to making your first asset in ZBrush. So the series is gonna be broken up into a couple videos. I'm not sure exactly how many yet. I'm thinking maybe three, but we'll see. And if you'd like to follow along, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell for notifications on when other videos come out. One last thing before we jump in, if you're interested in watching art or want to ask me questions, I stream over on Twitch a couple nights a week. You can find me at twitch.tv heartmakesart. If you like to watch streams or put streams on in the background, maybe check it out. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. So without further ado, why don't we go ahead and jump into ZBrush and get started. All right. So if this is your first time opening ZBrush, it's probably gonna look something like this. You're gonna see a pop-up window. Your UI is probably orange instead of blue. I just have custom colors, but otherwise it should not be any different. So we can just go ahead and close out this menu. And the first thing you're gonna notice is this big browser in the center. That's called the light box. And this is a basically a folder structure to uh, categorize all kinds of different things in ZBrush from brushes to meshes, alphas, uh, pretty much anything you can think of that you do inside of ZBrush, you can access through this menu. Uh, but having said that, we actually don't need it right now. So the first thing we can do is go ahead and turn this off. And you can do that one of two ways. You can either go ahead and hit the light box button up in the top left here, or you could hit the comma button on your keyboard. So you can just hit comma and that's going to disappear. Bam. The biggest hurdle in ZBrush is the UI and figuring out where things are and why things are the way they are. And so ZBrush is what's known as a 2.5D software. And the history is a little murky here because it even goes before my time when I started sculpting. I think the first time I used ZBrush was ZBrush 2. So there was already a long history of ZBrush before I was introduced to it at a point ZBrush had this intention that you could do like full illustrations and make like art in it and not just 3D sculptures. And so your document is referred to as your canvas. Oh, uh, you'll also notice if this is your first time opening ZBrush, uh, you'll have a screensaver. If you want to disable that screensaver, like we need to, you can just go ahead and go up to preferences and go down to screensaver. You can either set a time for that or turn it off. Uh, but as I was saying, your document is your canvas and for our purposes, we're not going to be really interfacing with the 2.5D stuff, but it will help explain some of the navigation and why things are the way they are in ZBrush. And we'll see that shortly. Just a, a brief overview of like the major modules we see here on the UI before we move forward. Uh, on the left hand side, you see uh, a lot of your working tools. Uh, almost think of it as like your tools in Photoshop. So, you know, you've got your brush, um, the effect that is applied to that brush. Um, if you're using an alpha on that brush, so the brush might be like a soft round brush or a hard brush or a triangle brush, you know, just the shape applied to the brush you're using. Um, texture is if you're trying to add color to the model. Uh, you have materials and materials basically are, if you're coming from like a different 3D program, you have like a blend or a fong. But instead, you've got this just crazy wild expanded version of materials. And I have some downloaded materials here, so you can go on the internet and find materials. And um, primarily it's for, you know, rendering your model a certain way, or uh, just some materials are better for sculpting. As we'll see shortly, the default material in ZBrush is this red clay material. And I'm not a fan, and I don't know many people that are fans, so. Um, pretty much always switch to a gray or a different color. And that's why I've downloaded a lot of materials. So uh, we'll look at that later. Um, under that, you've got the color picker. So if you're painting, uh, you can change your color. And that's pretty much it for that side. Now up top, you've got the main navigation menu all the way across the top. Under that, you've got basically what are your brush settings. So you've got the uh, RGB intensity. So if you're applying color, how intense that is, is like the opacity in Photoshop, you can think of it like that. We've got the focal shift and the draw size, which kind of affects the fall off um, or certain properties of your brush. And the draw size is the size of the brush and the Z intensity is how intense 
the pressure applied to that brush is. Um, and that's modified by your actual pressure sensitivity as well. Uh, up top, you know, we'll go through some of that stuff, but it's basically all the different panels in ZBrush. Um, you have a whole panel dedicated to your brush and all the advanced options and manipulations you can do with your brush. And that goes for most of the features through here. You'll see, you know, color um, document is one you might want to pay attention to. That's how you create a new document, how you set the canvas size. You can see down here, uh, things like that. So yeah, you can spend a lot of time really going through any one of these panels and seeing the different things. And I recommend you do that just to familiarize yourself. Got materials, you can actually modify the material you have selected here with a whole bunch of different settings. You've got preferences, which is where a lot of like the system stuff is. So if you're trying to look for like memory or performance. So yeah, that's pretty much it for preferences for now. There's a lot in there, but we don't need to talk about it too much right now. Um, renderings for uh, actually creating a final image um, or a, a more detailed preview of your model and all of these just go on and on and on. We don't have to worry about them too much right now. So one thing to note, you can hover over pretty much anything and press control and get an idea of what that thing does. So if we're, you know, hovering and hitting control over this, we can see all the information about what Z add and Z sub is. Um, and that goes, you know, for pretty much anything. So you can go to any menu, mouse over and hit control and get an idea of that setting. That's gonna be super helpful. You know, I recommend you use that a lot. Lastly, out of the major things on our UI right now is the tool menu. So on the tool menu is where you load, save, what you're working on pretty much. And this is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated because anything you're working on in ZBrush is what's called a tool. And within a tool, you can have sub tools and more specifically, they call it Z tools. So the file format is .ztl, it's a Z tool. But the thing is that you need to keep in mind, you can save in ZBrush two different ways. You can save your project by hitting control S and save the whole project, or you can save just your tool and it's only gonna save that tool. Now there's different reasons why you would wanna do either one. When you save your project, you can store things like history, you can store the position of all the tools in a project. So if it's organized a certain way, that might be useful for you. But if you just care about your model, uh, you can save just the tool. And that's actually, and that's likely gonna be like a file, a smaller file size. And uh, you can also more easily load that tool into other projects and things like that. Um, I use both. Lately, I've been saving my project more. I would just recommend uh, for now, just doing save as and probably just saving your tool. Okay, so from there, we have more to go over with the UI, but we need to go a little further in setting up our project before we can kind of unlock the rest of the UI. Let's do that. And then we can look at some more stuff. You'll see a whole lot more pop up in just a few minutes. All right. So now we're gonna create our first object. And what you need to do basically is notice over here we have cylinder 3D. And this is where we can create a piece of geometry. So if you click that cylinder, it's gonna load it into this active panel. And this is our active tool that we can draw. Now, if you click this, you'll see it brings up a larger menu of things we can switch to. So, you know, we've got basically all your primitives inside ZBrush here. And um, for our purposes, you know, you can choose whatever one you like, but I'm gonna choose a sphere. So now we have a sphere 3D here. And what we can do is we can come over to the canvas and click drag, and we have a sphere. Now, this is where that 2.5D history of ZBrush comes into play. If we go to try edit editing this, or we try to like scribble on it, You'll see, I'm just drawing more spheres. And that's because we're working on the whole canvas right now and not the object itself. And so in order to do that, we have to do a few things. So let's hit Control Z to undo. And we're gonna redraw our sphere. We need to go into edit mode. So to go into edit mode, we can either hit edit up here in the top left, or we can hit T on our keyboard, which is the edit hotkey. Now, You'll see when we go to draw that, we're gonna get an error and it's telling us that we need to turn this into a 3D primitive. In order to do that, 
we go up to the tool panel and we hit make poly mesh 3D. So go ahead and click that. Now we can sculpt on this. So go ahead and play around with that by just scribbling and seeing that. Now we have a tool that we can work with. Hooray, awesome. Okay, so now you may have noticed once we converted this mesh into a 3D poly mesh, a whole bunch of new stuff popped up. And this is where you have to slowly begin to learn how ZBrush organizes itself. So there's a lot of words and terms that are gonna sound completely foreign to you because they're specific to ZBrush, but we'll learn those in time. To get started though, it's not too bad, I promise. So the first thing we need to look at is the subtool menu. And you can open this by just mousing over subtool and clicking and it's going to expand that. So really each one of these are a sub menu with lots of different features, but they're grouped. So that's going to help you think about what you want when you're trying to figure out how to do something in ZBrush. If you're like, oh, I need to modify the geometry in some way. You can come under this geometry tab and kind of think about what you might need. Or you're like, oh, I want to apply some kind of deformation. We have a deformation panel and that has all these different deformations. And that's going to help you kind of think about where to find things. So if you're like, you kind of know what you want, you can kind of think about what category it might be in by just kind of digging around and thinking how the menu is grouped together. So let's expand that subtool menu. And what you'll see is this is where all our subtools live. So how I told you the tool panel is our overall tool. That's the whole, like the overall thing that we're working on. And inside that tool are subtools. And we don't need to worry about too much of this menu. It's a lot of it's pretty self-explanatory once you kind of start messing around. But what you can do is, for example, duplicate. And now you see we have two objects. And like Photoshop, this is very similar to Photoshop layers. We have a little eyeball and you can turn on or off different meshes. Obviously, these are both spheres on top of each other, so we're not going to see them change. But that's something to keep in mind. So as we're working on stuff, you know, you can, you might have a base body, a t-shirt, his hat, his shoes, and each one of those are a separate sub tool within your tool. The next thing we want to take a look at is navigation within the viewport. So it's basically like you were actually sculpting something in real life where you're holding an object in front of you and you're rotating it around and we're kind of looking around that object rather than us moving around it. So it's pretty straightforward, but it is different than other 3D programs. Let's look at navigation. So you can click drag around to rotate around the object. You can hold Alt and click drag around to move the object. And you can do Control right click to zoom in and out. Now, alternatively, you can also do all of those maneuvers through the UI and you'll see down here on the bottom right we have move zoom 3d and rotate so you can click and hold move to move around you can click and hold zoom 3d to zoom in and out and you can click and hold rotate to rotate around a couple other things to notice on this menu you can frame your object you can lock axes so you can only rotate in certain directions you can bring up your wireframe by hitting polyfill and you can also turn on transparency. So if we had other sub tools, it would make all the other sub tools transparent. And you can turn on solo, which will hide all your other sub tools and only show you the one you're currently working on. Not too important right now, but good to know. I would recommend taking some time to familiarize yourself with those features. In the next video, we're going to actually start sculpting on this object and learning about brushes, uh, materials, and a couple other things. After this series is finished, we're going to be looking at other techniques in ZBrush, looking at more intermediate stuff, advanced stuff, all kinds of ideas that I have for different videos about sculpting and stylized art. And I'm super looking forward to that. So please check it out. Please consider subscribing if you like this content and I'll see you over in the next video.